Welcome back, friends. This is Thomas Schwabe of Light Metaphors. I'm glad to have you back and um, just want to thank you uh, for subscribing to the YouTube channel, the YouTube page. Uh, just want to thank you for all your responses as well. Um, it's encouraging to be encouraged as well as uh, encourage others, you know. Um, it's, a, it's just a real blessing. Um, thank you for the uh, questions and the responses. Uh, to each of the videos um, and if you haven't subscribed uh, subscribe and uh, check out the videos that I'm posting you know God's really uh, releasing such a, a gift of, of his grace within within me to um, encourage e exhort to edify exhort and encourage and bring comfort um, and through this grace gift and uh, I just want to encourage everyone out there as well step out on the grace uh, God, that God has given you exercise the gift God has given you take the risk and step out on the water if you will for that's the only way you're going to grow and, and be stretched and that's the only way your gift is going to uh, begin to uh, reach others you know God's given each one of us a measure of grace uh, administration of grace for others to encourage others to build others up and and um, whatever it is find it out uh, find out your gift you know look deep within I can tell you one thing that your gift was always going to be connected to your passion and, and your desire and what you love to do and it's when you start operating in your gift that you it's not so much of a work it's it's more just work it's a labor of love you're gonna be empowered as you uh, exercise your gift as you operate in your gift uh, you're going to be strengthened you're going to be empowered just as a, a mentor of mine taught me years ago when you begin doing what God created you to do the the energy you receive will be greater than the energy expended so when you're doing what you're created to do by grace you're you're the energy you're going to be energized it, uh, you'll, you'll be energized and and um, empowered and uh, as you empower others may God bless you and so uh, uh, right now I'm going to share a little bit on the power of the seed of the Word of God you know God's Word is likened to a seed and within a seed everything is to come within a seed there's a forest actually there's a potential for a forest and uh, within the seed everything written down or are, are, are the the DNA or the blueprint of whatever that seed is uh, uh, is going to become is inside that seed but until that seed is planted until that seed is put inside of us or inside the soil and uh, inside the soil of our heart um, and takes root and is nurtured and held within there it will never produce after its own kind and the principle and the law that God set into motion in, the, in Genesis was uh, uh, let the earth bring forth all kinds of shrubs, plants, w uh, bearing fruit with seed in it after its own kind. It's the law uh, of reproduction. It's a law of uh, multiplication. God spoke it into in the beginning, and in, in to this very day, it's still operating. Because you can look out in nature and creation and see the same pine tree after pine tree after pine tree still multiplying, growing year after year. Um, fruit trees growing year after year. You know, there, the, there's a glory in the reality that God, what God spoke in the beginning is still happening uh, today. That there's a reverberating glory, if you will, on creation, uh, on the plants, uh, uh, in the animals, seen all around us. Uh, that started in the very beginning when God spoke it into being and he said be fruitful and multiply uh, speaking about mankind and and declaring over the earth to bring forth even to this day it's bringing forth and so the seed of God God's word is likened to a seed you know this the symbol of a seed can represent many a few different things in the scripture and you know seed can represent the uh, and your seed shall go uh, uh, continue on uh, representing uh, offspring the seed of faith the Word of God the uh, the faith is likened to a seed in the scripture you know it can grow and and the Word of God is likened uh, uh, to a seed um, Jesus um, spoke about um, the sower who he is he himself is a sower he gives us the seed and uh, bread for the sower 
are seed for the sower and bread for the eater. And the, uh, again, also bread is a symbol, a symbolic uh, symbol of the of the word of God as well. It's like fresh bread from heaven, revelation. And um, so seed, he gives seed to the sower so that the sower can sow the seed. And and in the natural, you know, we not understand that a seed must get into an environment in which it can begin to sprout and to grow. And in the same way, God's, God's word was meant to be spoken into mankind, spoken into the earth. He spoke it in the earth. That's, and he said, let the earth bring forth. You know, the earth is almost likened, can be likened to a mother. You know, we hear people use this, the phrase Mother Earth. There is some truth to that because the earth was, was uh, impregnated by God's voice, God's word, which is a seed again. And it, it was impregnated, it was it's, uh, spoken into, the seed went into it, and it, out of the earth came forth all kinds of things, all kinds of plants. And um, so it's likened to a mother that carries seed and is impregnated and gives birth. And so we ourselves are, uh, you know, he created us from the dust of the earth as well. And then he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And then out of Adam uh, uh, came forth uh, Eve. Um, and uh, and so like there, the, the, we are likened again to, to the earth. And... The part of us that uh, receives that spiritual seed, if you will, is the heart of the heart of man, the the mind of man, and the heart of man. Uh, you know, the, we receive the word of God um, either through externally by impartation through another person, or internally uh, directly from God uh, um, uh, in into us by revelation. The revelation of the word of God, like Paul said, flesh and uh, uh, Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. That's when Peter heard the voice of God, and it was spoken into, it, and Jesus declared and and called it out as a revelation, as a rock, a rock uh, of revelation, in which the church will be built upon. The church will be built upon the the revelation that was revealed to Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. So the voice came uh, as revelation into Peter, uh, and Paul said. Um, I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it from man, but I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. So God can speak to us directly, give us spiritual seed directly, or he'll do it through uh, an, another person, uh, situation or circumstances he can speak to us. But he imparts his seed, and we want to look at the, the, uh, the, uh, the seed of the word of God um, that we can receive even as we're reading the scripture and we're meditating upon it, because meditation is an important uh, key in in the process of of the seed being implanted and, and bringing forth fruit after its own kind so um, in the book of Luke it, Luke chapter 4 I want to particularly um, uh, zone in on uh, verse um, verse 15 Luke 4 15 but the seed in the good soil these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. But the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. You know, God wants us to, uh, our hearts to be good hearts, if you will. The heart again is this good soil. The good soil in in the parable of sower, sower represents a good heart. It's a heart in which there is no like clutter. It's a heart in which the ground of the heart there's it's not hardened. Um, it's not full of all kinds of other things, distractions, worries, cares, desires for other things, the riches of this world. It's a person in who uh, whose life is is not consumed by all kinds of other focuses. But it's a heart that is, is open and, and wanting, desiring to receive revelation, desiring to know the truth. That's good soil. It's a, it's a heart that when it hears uh, truth, it hears the word of God, it, it, uh, it holds it fast. 
And that's an important aspect of, of, of the seed ever bearing fruit, ever maturing and, and growing and manifesting in our lives is that it, it, we have to have a heart that will hold it fast. And that, that Greek word, that word hold it fast in the Greek is the word uh, kateko, uh, kateko. And it's, um, it's, uh, it, it actually means to, to in, in the Greek, uh, uh, in the Greek, it, uh, it, it's the n number uh, 27, 22 in, a, in the exhaustive concordance, Greek exhaustive concordance. It's 27, 22. And it, it actually means to hold down something. So when God's, we're, we're, we're hearing the word of God, we want to hold it down. And um, it, it means to hold fast to, to, the, to the word of God. It means to keep it, to possess it, to own it as your own, to keep, to possess, to own it as your own, to stay, to retain. I like the word stay because it reminds me of what Jesus said in the a parable of I am the vine and you are the branches and he says uh if my word abides in you and you if you abide in me and my word abides in you that word abide again that's speaking of the same thing it's is to stay to make itself at home inside of us um to 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 uh to own, to take residence within. God wants his seed to take residence inside of our heart, to abide in our heart, to remain, to make itself at home in our heart. And as it, re uh, as it, re it is retained within, we, as we hold it fast, then it has the potential or it's in, in the process of uh, uh, taking root within us. You know, in, uh, in other uh other parts of the parable in the parable of the sower like verse 13 it says those on the rocky soil are those who when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no firm root they believe for a while and in a time of temptation fall away so firm root is an important aspect of 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 uh, allowing the seed the word of god to actually uh produce to to mature within within you and so like uh the in this uh, verse uh, uh, 13 concerning the seed landing on um, rocky soil, it didn't take root. That was a key thing. It never took root. You know, it never took root. It was it was uh, there for a little while, but because of temptation, persecution, whatever other circumstances, they gave up on focusing on it. They gave up on retaining it, on nurturing it, on, on meditating on it. And that's a key uh in in the process that's very key in seeing the word of god that seed bear fruit is meditation and it's an, an a spiritual art it's a creative art it's the art of 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 relishing it's the art of musing to yourself it's the art of uh, muttering the word of god to yourself this is what the ancients were taught the ancients uh were walked in 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 the art of meditation they walked in that spiritual art that spiritual activity they practice it they integrated it in their lives when they received the the knowledge of god they would met muse it they would muse it. They would mutter it to themselves. They would, uh, they would uh, contemplate it. They would revolve it in the mind. It means to circulate. Or, or in the picture of a, of a cow, it's chewing the cud. Like the cow has, of, I think it's four stomachs. And what it does is it chews, regurgitates it. And then it brings it back up. Chews, regurgitates it. You know, it's a process of, uh, of a rumination. A process of uh, uh, um, a cyclic process of, of spinning. Uh, almost like a spinning. And I, would, I have called it in the past the meditation as spinning the word of God spinning the will of the word of God because God's word is likened to a will and when you begin to take hold of it and it begins to take hold of you it will move you it will change you that's why we understand uh, we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind the word of God gets inside of us and it rolls around inside of us it takes we take hold of it it takes hold of us and uh it begins to transfigure us, change us, transform us, uh, renew us in our minds. We're, we're being renewed in, in our minds. And as a result, we're, uh, we are being transformed or transfigured as a result of the renewing of the mind. The, it's the Greek word anakinosis. To, to, it's almost like to restore, like when you restore a, a, an old car. 
our minds are being renewed, restored, transformed, uh, renewed, and, and as a result, we are being transformed. You know, it's key. Thinking is a key thing in our lives. As a man thinks within himself, so he becomes. It's very important the type of thoughts we take hold of in our lives, the type of thoughts we embrace, the type of thoughts we, uh, we, uh, we incorporate in our lives. You know, all of us are a product of our thoughts and imaginations. We are all a product of our thoughts and imaginations. And so <clears throat> we want to get this seed, this spiritual seed, firmly implanted inside of us, embedded within us. And, and it's going to come through uh, 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 that place of retaining, of meditating, of, nur of nurturing and relishing the Word of God when we hear it, when we receive it. I want to go into a, a, another scripture in, the, in James because this is another description of the, of the Word of God and, and how uh, that seed takes root inside of us. You know, uh, in James chapter uh, 1, verse 21, it says, Therefore, putting aside all filthiness, and again, this is like making sure the soil within you has no, it's not uh, rocky, it's not full of other stuff, but the soil of your heart. You know, you and I are God's garden. We're, we're His garden. And He walks in the garden. He, he He's in the garden. He's spiritual taking care of uh, the garden. He's taking care of you and I. And we want, we want to co-labor with Him. And when He wants to prune things, we allow Him to prune things. And when He wants to pull uproot things, we allow Him to uproot things. And that's another function of the seed, of the Word of God. The Word of God is likened to a sword as well. And that's another dynamic of the Word. It's the sword that cuts things out. God's Word has the power to cut things out of us. As we integrate it and we take it in, He'll cut other things out. It's the principle of displacement. The greater displaces the lesser. God's light comes in, the sword of light, and it displaces the darkness, areas of darkness. It's the, it's the word of God is likened again to another dynamic. It's likened to water. And therefore, we get, understand the washing of the water of the word. It washes away debris. And as we continually take that in, the debris, uh, the things that are uh, set themselves up against the knowledge of God that are contrary to to his word, they get washed away. Uh, as we integrate the word, allow the water of the word to wash us, um, even as it says in Ephesians, having cleansed her through the washing of the water of the word. That's the bride. He's washing us. He's washing us and cleansing us. So there's these other dynamics and functions of the Word of God that I would like to share about also as well in the future. But James uh, one twenty one. therefore putting aside all filthiness and all the remains of wickedness, in humility receive the Word. In humility receive the Word. In other words, when you hear it, agree with what he says. Agree with the Word. Uh, I heard it once described that defined humility is simply agreeing with God. And, and false humility is the arrogant audacity of disagreeing with God. If God calls you a king and you say, Oh, no, Lord, I'm just, a, I'm just your lowly servant, then you're disagreeing with God. It's a false humility. You agree with the Lord. Agree, align yourself with Him um, in humility. Agree with Him. If He calls you a king, you're a king. If He calls you a teacher, you're a teacher, you're a teacher. You're a prophet, you're a prophet. You're an apostle, you're an apostle. That's what God has called you. You're a pastor. God's called you to, uh, as a pastor. Then that's uh, you agree with Him. Uh, you don't have to use the title. You know, the gift itself will bear witness. The gift itself will produce its fruit. Another, let another man praise you and not your own mouth. Another man's lips and not your own. Another will uh, conf confirm uh, the, the grace that's within you. They'll recognize it. So, you know, in humility, we receive the word, the, receive the word implanted. It's very important to agree. I'm reminded of Mary when the, it was prophesied over her and it was spoken over her by the angel. Uh, her response was, So be it unto me according to your word, Lord. So be it unto me, your servant, according to your word. According to your word. She just agreed with, agreed with God and, and said basically, Amen, be it done to me. And so we're, we're, we're to receive this seed implanted.
which is able to save our soul. And still another function and power of the working of the Word of God is to sozo, to save the soul. That's the Greek word save, sozo. And we understand sozo healing, prayer, sozo ministry, where we get prayer and we hear the voice of God. Others hear the voice of God for us and they pray in accordance with the voice of God. You know, the word sozo means to preserve. It means to deliver. It means to uh, save, to set free to heal all these dimensions and functions of of the word of god uh, are are the effects are are from the 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 word of god the the seed of god it it uh, it brings all these effects in our lives it delivers us it frees us it heals us it restores us he restores my soul his voice restores your soul it heals you so we're to receive the seed implanted which is able to sozo our soul so the seed that Greek word implanted is it's the word uh uh it's the word um or another translation is engrafted, implanted, engrafted, like you in, you understand uh, the grafting of a of one branch from one fruit tree into you engraft it into another different fruit tree and and uh that uh, plum, if you will, uh, that is, uh, or that apricot that is implanted into a peach tree, it begins to, that apricot branch begins to draw on the sap of the peach tree, the trunk of the peach tree, and, and it begins to produce its apricots, even though it's not an apricot tree. It's, there's an engrafted branch, apricot branch, into the tree, and it's existing and drawing the sap, and it's producing apricots as well as peaches. So it's engrafted, it draws in, and God wants to take that seed which and engraft it into us or implant it into us so we can produce that uh, particular uh fruit the particular fruit of what he's spoken in our life into our lives and grafted into our lives and again so the word uh implanted is also um described as engrafted in other translations and it's, it's the greek word infutos it's from the uh, uh strong exhaustive concordance it's number 17 uh 21 for those who love to study which is a good thing infutos um and it comes from uh of uh, 1722, uh, which is denoting a fixed position in place or time, a fixed position in place or time. But remember earlier how I was speaking about we need to retain it, the word, the seed. We need it when it comes. We need to hold hold it fast to seed upon, seize upon it, to allow it to uh, abide and remain to make itself at home within us. So it this seed needs to be in that fixed position in time or or state. And uh, you want uh, in breaking down this word in futos, the the part, next part of uh, the word is a, a fuu, um, fuu, and it, it that's part of the word in futos. You're breaking it down. I'm breaking it down, and uh, so that word in that part fuu, it actually means to puff up, to puff up, to puff up, or blow, blow, to puff up, blow to swell up, to swell up, or to germinate, to germinate, or grow, or to sprout, to produce and to spring up. This is what occurs when we have the Word of God deeply embedded within us, implanted within us. This Word will begin to sprout. It will begin to puff up. It will begin to uh, blow up, to swell up. It will begin to germinate, just like in the natural. When the sower sows the seed in the garden, in the field, it begins to take root. It, it's embedded in the soil. It begins to take root inside. It begins to germinate and it begins to sprout. And that that blade pops up out of the ground. That which was hidden in beyond the, the natural eyes, underneath the ground, underneath, inside of your heart, inside of my heart, that which was hidden. Nobody knows it but God alone. Seeds are sown in the soil. The rain comes down and then things begin to sprout and you begin to find out what's inside of your heart and people's hearts because it, the blade will come out, the fruit, the, the sprout will come out and then we'll have the process of that seed maturing, that plant maturing. First comes a blade, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. So again, it's we see more of a process going on um, uh, beyond the implanting, but the process of growth, of maturation and 
what happens is we, we want to come to a place where through and through by patience or perseverance bear fruit back into Luke regarding the good soil you know it's we receive the seed we retain it we persevere and through patience we bear fruit because it takes a process of time for this seed to mature this word to mature God will take you through uh, a process in your life in which uh, what he has spoken into you will mature and come to a place of fruition and sometimes things are have a certain time in in God there's a time uh, we here understand the principle of the fullness of time um, where God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem us but there was a, a fullness of time and there's timing for certain things in our lives and God wants to, to release us into bring us into uh, a, that place of maturity and release us uh, into a divine purpose and to bring forth a fruit uh, the fruit of what he has spoken into our lives the fruit of the Word of God the seed he as a farmer as the sower planted in our lives and God wants us to to bring forth after what he has spoken and and uh, he wants us to be those who bear the the different measures of the fruit of of what he's spoken some 30 some 60 some 100 fold and and it's a, a, a god's desire to continue to speak into our hearts and lives and be those who have a heart that receives the seed of god's word paul says let the word of christ dwell in you richly that word richly it's it, it's um, described as abundantly and bountifully. So I just want to encourage everyone listening just to uh, stir up the, the, the hunger for the Word of God. Ask God for hunger. And here's a key to get that hunger started. They, uh, the psalmist said, My heart grew hot within me, the soil within me. My heart grew hot within me. As I meditated, the fire burned. There's the word again as I meditate. It's the Hebrew word uh, haga, haga, and it it, it means to 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 uh, it, it's it has to, a lot to do with speech. It's murmuring the word to yourself. It's a it's a it's a murmuring. It's a contemplative utterance. As you as as I meditated, the fire burned. As you meditate. As you take a phrase or a scripture that God's given you and you begin to meditate on that, you're going to arouse the fire, the passion for the word. You're going to arouse a hunger. You're going to stir up a hunger within you for the word of God. And, and that's how you're going to get that hunger going. It's just going to stir within you. It's going to inflame the passion within you. The fire will be fan within you. Meditation is like fanning the fire and the fire of God's word, uh, taking the word of God, meditating on it, begins to fan your heart. Your heart will begin to grow hot. My heart grew hot within me as I meditated the fire burned. There will be a glow within you. The word will begin to glow. We will begin to glow. It's like the coal of the word of God will begin to glow and cause your heart to be warmed. And you'll hear this word. And this word will sink down. As the word you hear the word, it will you allow it to sink down into your heart as you meditate. And it will begin to glow and a passion will begin to be aroused and a hunger. And this is a key uh, to getting st getting that hunger uh, started, stirred up within you. And so my, my prayer for you is, is that you'll be like uh, those... Uh, People in the book of Acts that were described as noble, uh, they were the Bereans. They were searched out the word of God, and they were they were uh, a noble, and they they had a good and noble heart, and they were open to hear the word of God. And just as the ancient Job, he says, "For I delight in your word more than my daily bread." May your heart be likened to that. May your heart be full of a hunger and a delight for the word of God, just as the prophet Jeremiah said, "When his word came, I ate it." It, it, when his word came, I, my, uh, I ate it and joy came to my soul. When he ate the word, when the word came, he ate it and joy came to his soul. May you eat the word of God and may the word abide in you as you abide in the word himself. May every portion of what he speaks to you abide in you. God bless you. Thank you for checking out Light Metaphors. And uh, uh, I just uh, encourage you to subscribe to the 
uh, the channel and and may you continue to be blessed even as uh, you hear um, and and receive and may God continue to con uh, continue to stir us up all and to step out into the things that he has for us in our lives God bless you thank you very much